I was teaching the genealogy class, and when I would tell these stories about these iconic people, uh, the students would say to me, I have lived here all of my life, and I've never heard these stories before. Tell me more. Hello, my name is Karen Williamson, and I'm the writer and producer of Let's Talk. We have something to say about Thomas Day, Henrietta Jeffries, Nicholas Dillard, and Maud Gatewood. The four people that we are commemorating in this presentation have traveled an incredible journey. Their journeys carved profound life stories. Their lives are testimonies to the power of resiliency and integrity. We learn from them that it requires determination, discipline, patience, faith, and some struggles with self-doubt to develop our God-given talents into a vocation that can serve mankind in a positive way. Caswell County's history is rich with iconic people. Historic figures who made a contribution to Caswell County. The many biographies portrayed are about people whose stories need and deserve to be told. Caswell History Speaks was designed to enlighten the audience through entertainment. As a result, this is how Caswell History Speaks was formed. It is our pleasure to bring some of the Caswell County world to you. Hey!
My name is Maul Gatewood, and my year is 2004. My name is Nicholas Dillard, and my year is 1959. And we have something to tell you. Let's talk. with the ability to bring life into this world. I was born in Yanceyville to paint life as art. I came to Yanceyville to teach how to build life. And I came to Milton to build exquisite furniture that you would love for life. When I first came to Milton in 1823, the city was alive with commerce and bustling with wealth. We had silversmith shops, jewelry stores, doctors with their private practices. We had lawyers, a state bank, a newspaper, and we had a two-story, 12-room hotel. We had dance halls and taverns, and people came from all around, including Danville, for their courting and for their dancing. I bought my first piece of property on Main Street, and I bought it from a white gentleman. I paid cash. I wanted all of the successful white businessmen to know that I was a successful businessman. You see, during that time, a man's wealth was determined by his land, his money, and his personal property. And so I bought land to farm. And I bought the very first best farm equipment. I bought the very best wood carving equipment. And I, I bought slaves. A man's wealth was determined by the money and his personal property, which included human assets. His wealth gave him status. His status gave him power. And power gave him a seat at the table of decision. I wanted to position myself among all men, and particularly the wealthy white men, so that I could have a seat at the table of decision making of all of the names around us. I bought slaves because I wanted my enslaved brothers and sisters to know that there was a better life ahead of them than slavery. I could teach them a trade. And they could hire themselves out, which was a common practice to earn money to buy their freedom and their family freedom. In my business, I could teach them how to write and to count. And with these two skills, they would be able to navigate through this segregated society. I wanted to teach them to read. Then they could read the Bible and know that God loved them and that they were precious in his sight. But most importantly, I wanted to deny 
death as being their only escape out of bondage. If you had to tell someone in 10 words or less what you stand for in life, what would you say? It might be noble to speak of liberty for all people. But what do you stand for? Perhaps you would take up the noble cause of children abused or neglected children. But what do you stand for? Decent housing, equitable distribution of food, education, perhaps peace of mind, truth, honesty, and the viable use of your God-given talents and abilities. Or maybe just plain old love. Turpentine oil to clean the babies after birth. 
I put a knife or scissors under the pillow to help cut the pain. And I would read passages from my Bible, and I would pray. Every Sunday, I would go to church, and I said, Lord, help and guide me. But no, I wasn't practicing medicine. And the judge himself said so. And dismissed the charges. He said, Miss Henry, I'm going to send you back to your humble home. And you have done a wonderful service for Caswell County. More than you'll ever know. He said, one day, when you're gone, they're going to honor your memory by saying, well done, you good and faithful servant. Yes, he did. I was delivered by a midwife, Juja, Julia Lee. After the delivery, Juja took my father out back to bury the placenta. He had to dig a really deep hole to keep the animals from getting at it and eating it. After it was properly buried, Juja told my father that from then on, my life would be all right. The placenta is the beginning of life. You must respect it and give it a proper burial. The ground was chosen as its final resting place. The ground is Mother Earth. By putting it back in the arms of Mother Earth, it assured that that child will have a long and healthy life. If I got my ticket, Lord, can I ride? If I got my ticket, Lord, can I ride? If I got my ticket, Lord, can I ride? to become a teacher in 1930. I sought to prepare those students for a world that lied ahead after graduation. I proudly say to you that in 1934 we had a graduating class of 37 students. Fully accredited the first school 
for Negro children was, was fully accredited. In 1941, we built a new school building. I was able to procure funds from the state for construction of the new structure. It was a great building. Money from bake sales, candy sales, tobacco sales, also went towards the building of that three-story accomplishment made of bricks. We had 913 students and a staff of 26. We had an auditorium with a stage. We had a band room. We had a glee club room. And we had a cafeteria. I tell you, it was a great building. In 1954, Caswell County Training School was still fully accredited. The white schools were not. I sought to prepare my students and to give them the best education that the community could give them because they deserved it. Being the only daughter of a Yanceyville sheriff, I became independent early on in life. I would often ride shotgun with my father on patrols or moonshine steel bus. My mother aimed to raise me as a southern belle. She encouraged me to draw as a child. At 10 years old, I went to Avery College to study figure drawing. I spent most of my childhood drawing. I went to college at 16 to study art. Art is my life. Life is art, only painted. <laughs> I spent most of my life teaching art, traveling around the world, wearing a painter's smock and blue jeans, chain smoking, <laughs> and liking, not liking to cook. <laughs> so much for my becoming a Southern babe. <laughs> In 1850, I was one of the 10 richest men in Caswell. I had the largest furniture-making company in the state. And my reputation as the maker of exquisite furniture was known throughout the state and beyond. I had white men, freemen, and slaves working in my shop. I would let the wood do the talking. I would have the feel of the flow and the air and the curves of the wood to know exactly where the design would be. But I also believe that no piece of furniture should ever be an when I was with the Caswell County Commission, I was the only woman. It was just me and the boys. <laughs> I tried to lead them in the right direction, but they didn't always follow. For example, I wanted to save the facade of the old bank of Yanceville on Court Square. I wasn't successful. They tore it down anyway. It saddened me to see us tearing down our old, beautiful, historic buildings. And tearing down these old, historic buildings we were throwing away a viable resource that makes us unique. There comes a time when you 
must stand up and be counted. No matter how unpopular it may be, it is good and honorable to have a cause. Yeah. 
I thought it was wonderful. I thought uh, a lot of talent. I saw incredible talent here tonight. And um, I just loved it. It was almost like a Greek play in many ways. And, but I really thought everybody gave an incredible performance. Um, I was a student of Maud Gatewood. So uh, that particular role tickled me pink. Oh, I just thought it was fantastic. I was amazed at the history of Henrietta. That was mind-blowing to me. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Great history, just enjoyed it to the highest. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, we should need more plays like that. I think it just brought the history, made it a little more real. A wonderful performance from all of us, the key people here. I thought it was outstanding. Very impressed with the, the quality of the actors and actresses and the acapella music which just blew me away. 